Welcome back to this fourth and last video. I hope you still have some energy. We are going to talk about vision and sustainable leadership. So setting the vision why? Being a social entrepreneur takes courage and vision. A vision is the starting point of any enterprise, social or otherwise. It is a dream but with a plan to make it happen. A social entrepreneur has a vision of what society would look like if the problem they have identified has been solved. That might be a society where the oceans are clear of plastics, everyone has equal access to healthcare, mental illness is no longer stigmatized, or young people's voice are heard. The social entrepreneur's ID and the organization they build around that ID is their route to making their vision a reality. Because impact investors invest in the future and in really resilient entrepreneurs. Setting your vision will help stakeholders understand where you want to go. It will shape how you are going to run your business. Vision could be stated on your website, social media, marketing and fundraising material, or in any impact or sustainability report. You can go on the Ashoka website to watch videos of social entrepreneurs sharing their vision for some examples. And from the vision, you can start building your theory of change. You remember what this is? It's the specific type of methodology for defining and planning long-term impact goals and then work backward to identify necessary preconditions. If this is still unclear, I invite you to go check the first video. So setting the vision is key to serve at best your beneficiaries. At the end of the day, they are at the core of any social enterprise. Just a side note that beneficiary can be the environment, by the way. It's also key to attract and retain talents, especially nowadays when younger generations are looking for purpose at work. So be vocal about your vision. It's, it's key as well to attract impact investors. I mentioned it already that impact in investors want to understand where you want to go and how you're going to create impact. It's key as well to align with your stakeholders, attract and retain clients, and select the right partners aligned with your purpose. So some key characteristics about social entrepreneurs. It might look a bit overwhelming, but remember that investors invest in people and teams. Of course, they will look at the ID, but a good ID without proper execution is worth zero. For a startup, everything relies on the founding team. When you pitch or present your project, investors want to see if you're capable and have the right skills to execute on your ID. So over the years of meeting several social entrepreneurs, in turn, it turns out that most of them are empathic, passionate, transparent, purpose-driven, committed, courageous, collaborative, visionary, resourceful, and so on. I believe that those characteristics, even though they are not exhaustive, are key to be a sustainable leader, which brings me to my next topic, sustainable leadership. There is a need for all leaders, including board members, to build their competencies surrounding sustainability. Investors want to know everyone at the tables have, has a clear understanding on, of how sustainability and climate change are also risk management and financial issues. Not only this, but stakeholders should know the impact on the long-term viability of an organization. Sustainable leadership is a process of influence that delivers direction, alignment, and commitment, and aims to address social, environmental, and economic issues to create a better world. Our society needs more and more sustainable leaders and sustainable leadership style to address the flaws of current business, economic, and political practices. It is at the utmost importance to have sustainable leaders motivated by long-term goals rather than short-term and immediate gains. Sustainable leaders understand and embrace growing complexity, becoming more adaptable as a result. More important, importantly, these are long-term thinkers We see business as deeply interwoven with people and the environment, not only as individual entities. 
driven by their strong values, they make bold moves that focus on the impact of the, of the organization on the next generations rather than the next quarter. With these skills embedded in their management style, sustainable leaders prepare the organization to flourish and expand long into the future. Leaders that measure success near exclusively on ROI are unlikely to adapt well to the present climate realities. According to the Value Reporting Foundation, about 68 out of 77 industries are already adversely impacted by climate change. 68 out of 77, that's a lot. Environmental disasters will continue to disrupt global supply chains, bearing access to energy and food. Additionally, top talents and consumers alike are increasingly drawn to organizations that value sustainability, leaving behind organizations who don't take purposeful action. Most important of all, sustainability is a human issue, and the preservation of the world is an investment in a better future for everyone. By developing decision makers with the qualities sustainable leaders share, organizations will create new ways of working that support the interconnected system of business, humanity, and the global environment. And obviously, sustainable leadership, it goes beyond social entrepreneurship. You should and you can apply sustainable leadership in any organization. According to the 2021 Ernst & Young Global Institutional Investor Survey Report, 70% of investors divest from companies with poor sustainability performance. Therefore, businesses now need a new type of leadership, one that makes our planet's long-term sustainability a top priority in order to solve grave environmental concerns related to non-renewable energy use, climate change, and greenhouse gas mitigation, among so many other issues. Leaders from all disciplines must collaborate to change company culture, develop long-term solutions, and think creatively. Consequently, to promote sustainable leadership across various sectors, top executives need to acquire new skills and competencies. Sustainable leaders strive to drive a positive change by building sustainable enterprises that reduce the impact of operations on the natural environment. To achieve this objective, they should work toward implementing the following five principles of sustainable leadership. Having an ecocentric, systemic, and long-term mindset. Top leaders should inspire emerging professionals to incorporate long-term mindset into their worldview to reduce the negative impact that people have on the environment. Two, they establishing a cross-boundary leadership network. Sustainability leaders establish a cross-boundary leadership network by collaborating with leaders in different roles. Project executive, thought leaders, subject matter experts, and trusted advisors may all be part of this leadership group. By coordinating action points, strength, strengthening connections, and transforming key strategies into action that appeal to various stakeholders groups, sustainable leaders create a shared vision for achieving change. Three, exercising influence without authority. The key to sustainable leadership is influence, not authority. Sustainability leaders need to exercise their influence across the world to vast diverse groups of people among whom they might not have any authority. Therefore, leaders must develop credible powers by strategically engaging in social networking to build a relationship with employees and exercise influence without having any formal authority. Four, working with complexity. There is rarely a defined consensus on how to address organizational challenges. Hence, a core skill for leaders include distinguishing between various leadership types and selecting the appropriate leadership style to resolve problems, depending on the nature of the challenge. Five, recognizing the importance of leading oneself. Prioritizing self-leadership by increasing self-awareness of sustainable values and purpose is a fundamental component of sustainable leadership development. Now it's important to understand the key characteristics of sustainable leaders 
as distinct from more from other more established leadership styles. To make the difference clear, five characteristics have been identified. The sustainability mindset, system thinking, relationship building, continuity of commitment, effective communication. As you may, as you may see on the slide, I've uh, copy pasted the cover of a book called Net Positive. Uh, in this book, the former Unilever CEO Paul Polman and sustainable business guru Andrew Whitson explore 50 years of corporate dogma. They reveal key lessons from Unilever and other pioneering companies around the world about how you can profit by fixing the world's problems instead of creating them. To thrive today and tomorrow, they argue, companies must become net positive which means giving more to the world than you take. A net positive company will improve the lives of everyone it touches, from customers, suppliers, to employees and communities, greatly, greatly increasing long-term shareholder returns in the process. They need to take ownership of all the social and environmental impacts in its business model. And three, they need to partner with competitors, civil society, governments to drive transformative change. So these are the reason why any company could thrive with sustainability and become net positive. Again, becoming net positive, it means for a company to give back more than they take, which is not really the case for all companies right now. So this is one of the shifts shift that needs to happen. Moving now to corporate values alignment. We are moving away from social entrepreneurship and looking at bigger organization. According to a Deloitte Global 2021 Millennium and Gen Z survey, 44% 44, 44 of millennials and nearly 50% of Gen Z said that they have made choices over the type of work they are prepared to do and the organization for which they are willing to work based on their personal ethics. Aligning personal values with corporate values is a factor that should not be underestimated. Corporate values should be defined and transparently communicated. Ethical corporate values should be genuine and embedded into the organization's DNA. A risk though with overpromising is to be perceived as greenwashing. And we're gonna, gonna talk about greenwashing in a couple of minutes. So evidencing your impact with clear metrics and data on how your organization contribute to the sustainable development goals or an, a better world, uh, it needs to be clear on what the impact metrics are and make sure that you are conducting a business aligned with your impact claims. So as I mentioned, we're gonna look now at greenwashing which is a risk that occurs when an organization lacks transparency and authenticity. So a new report from Planet Tracker identifies six types of greenwashing. The first is green crowding, which is built on the notion that hiding among, amongst a crowd of other corporates can keep environment, environmentally damaging approaches hidden. Basically, it's joining a, an, an, an initiative where actually you are publishing on, on this initiative, but not doing anything. The second one is green lighting. It's another term used in the report to describe how companies shine a spotlight on green credentials in order to draw attention away from environmentally damaging activities. Examples include manufacturers showcasing decarbonization, even as plastics, pollutions, and resources use expand. Third one is green shifting. Is it's also listed in the report and refers to when companies try and shift the blame up or down the value chain, usually towards consumers. Other firms are using green labeling, a practice where marketing departments misled through their adverts by claiming something is green. The report also highlights the growth in green rinsing, which can occur when companies regularly change climate and sustainability targets before they've even achieved them. Planet Tracker highlights Coca-Cola and PepsiCo as two examples of this. Finally, the report covers the growing role that green hushing is having in corporate communications. 
The terms refers to corporates under reporting or even hiding the sustainability data and performance to avoid stakeholder scrutiny. Nobody wants to get caught up in a greenwashing scandal. And therefore, I really recommend that you look at those terms. It's uh, really interesting and you can find plenty of examples. Let's now move to almost our final slide about sustainability in SMEs. We talk about a lot about social enterprise, and now let's focus a bit on SMEs, the majority of our economy. As mentioned in previous slides, there is a difference between a social enterprise and a responsible business. Even if you're not considering building a social enterprise, embedding sustainability in your organization is needed for several reasons. SMEs are exposed to more sustainability-related risks than large organizations. They don't have the cash reserves of larger companies or the influence or ever more complex supply chain. So ignoring sustainability can prove more costly for SMEs than for their larger counterparts. Shareholders, staff and customers expect the same commitment to sustainability from all businesses, regardless of size. Being small can be an advantage. It often means being more flexible and able to make change quickly. Embedding sustainability practices in the DNA of SMEs make them more resilient and attractive. If you are employed in a company, how is this company performing on sustainability? Where can it improve? Feel free to look at the website of your employer if you are employed and see how they are communicating and performing on sustainability. This is always super interesting. We are now at the end of this video and this webinar. I hope I gave you a good understanding of social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and sustainability in business overall. Remember, sustainability is a journey but we are facing some urgencies, climate change, lack of inclusion, access to basic needs, et cetera, et cetera. We can't wait forever to solve our most pressing issues. We all need to be part of the solution. Intentionality and purpose at the core of business principles as an, as an entrepreneur, an investor, or an employee. And remember about impact investing, this is about intention but not only as you also need to measure and manage the impact created by your portfolio companies. Get inspired, go visit incubators and accelerators for social entrepreneurs, contact business angel networks, check out the various links and reference I mentioned throughout the webinar. If you want to know more about time and our activities, feel free to check our website, www.time.org or follow us on LinkedIn. I'm wishing I'm wishing you all a wonderful rest of the day and see you soon.